Hey everybody, welcome to Mike's Beer Blog. And today we're going to be making some summer citrus beer cocktails. My favorite bartender Sarah is here to join us. She has set everything up. She's going to get me taken care of. And I'm super excited. Sarah, do you want to tell us about what we're going to be doing? Yeah, for sure. So we're doing a Paloma today. We'll spin on a Paloma. We're going to top it off with a Sierra Nevada wild little thing. Slightly sour ale. It's just going to be your typical Paloma, but some people like to do grapefruit soda. We'll be doing grapefruit juice and grapefruit beer instead. So I'm going to start off by getting my glass ready. Just going to do a half rim of salt. That looks kind of rough, I'm not going to lie. You need to impress us, sir. Come on now. I know. <laughs> I'm just off my game, Mike. You be the first to point that out, huh? Always. All right, so I'm going to fill my shaker with ice. Stuck together. I'm going to do half an ounce of fresh lime juice. Just squeezed it off camera. You said you got that jigger from your mom? My grandmother, actually, she didn't drink, but mm -hmm. we, uh, she found this cocktail set, and I thought it was super cute. It's got like a little Spartan guy on it. Um, I mean, that's what we all think when we see Spartans, is they're adorable. I know. It's leather. How could you not love it? It's a leather Spartan jigger. Leather so Spartan jigger. You love it. That's I mean, cool. you have to. This is three quarters ounce of grapefruit juice. And then I'm going to take this... Um, Tequila, not the gin, guys. I'm going to take this El Quimador tequila. We're going to do an ounce and a quarter of that. Right in there. I'm going to give that a little shake and strain it into the glass. going to top it off with this beer right here. That already looks pretty delicious. Help, I have nails, Mike. <laughs> Girl problems. Lady problems. Okay. I'm just going to give it a really nice color to it. It's really got a nice little sour bite to it. Just going to garnish it with this grapefruit wheel. It's pretty big, so I got a smaller one just in case it doesn't work out. And a lime. Wow. And there you have it. Our nice little Paloma beer summer cocktail. That looks fantastic. Man, I got to say, I love the actual like hue that this has to it. You can see that in the light. It's still, the beer seems to have kind of gotten to the bottom. The spirits, spirits normally go up. They're less, uh, they're less dense than water, and that really like makes this drink that much more pretty. I love the garnishes. You do a great job. The grapefruit isn't overwhelming, and it actually like really brings out like what's going on here. I feel like my first pull should be without the salt, so I'm going to go ahead and pull Might from this side right here. Big grapefruit off of there. Nah. <laughs> it's a I, little extra, but it's I got cute, this. right? I want, I want to get my nose into that grapefruit. I want to be smelling grapefruit for the next three days. You will. Trust me. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. Wow. I'm not the biggest fan of grapefruit. I'm not the biggest fan of bitter. I'm not even that big, big of a fan of sour. But the way that this wild little thing just plays out, this is this is phenomenal. Do you want to give it a shot? Yeah, for sure. I am going to try it with the salt. I don't trust myself not knocking this garnish off, though. <laughs> I really don't. If anyone's met me, they know. Yeah, that's really nice. That's fantastic. I could sit on a patio out in the sun. Yeah. And just drink that. Just it's sour, but it's just perfectly sour, you know? Yeah, it, well, it's not even... So the thing is, well, uh, this is what I have in my glass right now. And um, it's 
this is actually more sour on its own than this. Like, give this, give it a shot. Okay. And you will see just how sour this beer is in comparison to that Paloma. And that's really surprising because, yeah, it's a bit bracing, I know. No, I like it. Oh, lot. you like it? I didn't anticipate <laughs> liking that at all, to be honest with you. Like, I'm just going to keep this. Oh, that's all yours? I mean, well, you have extras in there, too. That's true. <laughs> I thought I was going to take them home, but sorry. <laughs> there yours <Tonight>. now. <laughs> well, I may want to pour a little bit. Oh, actually. Just top it off in there. Hell yeah. It's a really nice pairing. I, Perfect I agree. for a Paloma. Yeah, if anyone who's making a Paloma with, what is it, that uh, squirt? Mm -hmm. uh, fuck. Anyone who's making a Paloma with squirt, don't do it. Use the wild little thing from now on. Absolutely. This is fantastic, y'all. Here's to you. <coughs> <laughs> the sour does get to you. Oh. It's because you added the extra beer in there. You knocked off my ratio, Mike. <laughs> That's why she's the mixologist and I'm just a drunk. <laughs> but all right, Don't tell on yourself. We're going to clean these glasses real quick. And we're going to be right back to try out. But we're doing the Tom Collins next. We're going to do a Tom Collins. So y'all stay with us. All right, everybody, we're back. Had to clean out our glasses and cleanse our palates a little bit. That way we're ready for this next drink. I say that because... I'm going to keep drinking that. They had to cleanse their palates. I'm going to keep drinking this while I'm waiting on the next drink. So what are we going to be doing now? So we're going to be doing a beer cocktail Tom Collins. So for this one, we have the Fireman's Four Blonde. And we're going to be using this beautiful Bombay Sapphire Gin. So I'm going to start by putting some ice in this shaker. Not too much. And we're just going to go in with an ounce and a quarter of this gin. Spill a little for good measure. Don't have. want Mike getting too drunk now. Joke's on you. I'm going to lick it off the table. Oh, I don't doubt you for a second. All right, so I have fresh squeezed lemon juice, and we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of that. Okay. That's, this, she did that so I don't lick it off the table. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Saved your liver a little bit. And then I've got three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup right here. We just made this off camera too. It's just a one to one ratio of sugar and water. I asked her if she made it herself earlier and she's just like, you know me. I said, this is not a Chili's. Oh, That's pardon. what I said. This oh, is not a Chili's. <laughs> She we wasn't, make she wasn't as here. polite as I thought, as I said a second ago. I don't even know why you'd expect that out of me, if we're being honest. I mean, that's fair. It is fair. All right, a little shake, shake. Put some ice in the Collins glass. Just going to strain that into here. Normally, you'd be topping this off with soda. But we're going to be topping it off with this Fireman 4 Blonde. Dun, dun, dun. I'm a bartender, I swear. <laughs> Guys, nobody look. I got it. Okay. Just going to tilt the glass a little bit here. Top this off. Little lemon wheel to make it pretty. That actually already is really pretty. I love how, like... These beers are just like actually mixing very beautifully in here. I mean, I have a little bar spoon. I could stir it, but I do mean. Do you want to do that or do you want to keep it like should this? Should we ruin the aesthetic? No, actually, it, it doesn't look very well um, mixed together, so. Yeah, and you can see like kind of the pulp. That's actually, I mean, it's really pretty. It you is. How, you mind if I try it like this and then we stir it? No, go for it. All right, let's see what we get off this one. Probably beer. <laughs> Probably, that's what I smell <laughs> on the pole. I get a lot of lemon and I get a lot of the beer, but the lemon could be coming from the garnish. For sure. That smells good. I mean, that's actually still pretty good. Alright, so let's... The lemon does come through on it, but yeah, you get a little bit more of the beer on top. To make this right. Not too much. We don't want to mess up the carbonation of the beer, but just enough to incorporate it all. We gotta make it pretty again, of course. Naturally. It just wouldn't be right otherwise. Alright, let's try it that way. Let's see. 
Yeah, it's still, you still got a little bit of the pulp coming in there. Mm -hmm. um, this is a filtered beer, so to my knowledge, it's gone through, through the bottling process. There's no extra yeast or fragments of anything else that are in there, so this should all be pulled from the juices. This is still really pretty. There's no more layers to it, it's just one solid, like, lemonade-looking thing. This is great. Yeah, this is just... <laughs> I'm really excited to try this. I can't wait anymore. It's better with the stir. You're 100% right. Wow. I'm always right. That, that's the power of being a woman, after all. It's true. You gotta tell me what you think of it. Okay, let's see. It's like a very robust lemonade. The beer gives you a, it gives it a little more of an earthiness to it, but it's. I love that. Yeah. It's like a really good shandy. That's what it reminds me yeah, of. Yeah, but not even like a really really good shandy, like an actual shandy mm -hmm. that is made to taste the way it's meant to taste. It's not like someone just got some malt liquor threw some artificial lemon flavor in it. Right. Like that is. Well, it's essentially got fresh lemonade in it. Got your lemon juice, got your yeah. sugar syrup. So, yeah, for sure. It's just yeah, it is lemonade, beer, and gin, pretty much. Yeah, and that blonde ale, like, complements it. Let's see if we throw a little bit more in there, see if it'll work. So, can you give it a little stir for me? Oh, yeah, for sure. Because the beer kind of does get lost a little bit in it, but it is a blonde ale, so it's not meant to be super intrusive as it is. That was kind of the point of the pairing also. Right, right. Because we don't want... You don't want to put... I wouldn't put an IPA with that. I think it would damage the, it's such a, the, I don't want to say the, like. The bitter hoppiness would probably overtake anything else. It's really delicate with the lemon juice. Mm. I think you'd lose most of that in hops. That's still really good. There's a slight difference in the, you get maybe a little bit more of the beer. You would probably pour that whole bottle in there and it would still just taste how it tastes. It's fantastic. I don't know which one's better. They're both just so good. But with that being said, let's clean our shaker one more time. All right. I gotta get one more pull. Just I'm a woman, that's... so you know I know my place in the kitchen washing dishes. I didn't As say I that. Going, I didn't say that. I never say that. I don't know what you're talking about. Here's to you. Hell yeah. The pupper wanted to join. <laughs> All right, everybody, we got one more drink tonight. This is the only drink I've actually had before tonight. It's the one I was most excited about, and the fact that I've enjoyed both the Paloma and the Tom Collins. I'm really wondering if this is going to be able to top both of them. So let's get into it. We're going to have a mojito. Mojito. Yeah. mojito. So we're going to do a classic mojito, but instead of using the club soda, we're using this Texas professional, prof um, I'm sorry, Professional Texan, coal style beer. It's actually brewed, what, 30 minutes away at the Fredonia yep. in Nacogdoches. So, good local beer. Start out with a couple of slices of lime, probably about like half a lime, I'd say. Normally when I make them, I put a little extra lime in, but I don't want to mess up her ratio, so I'm not going to say anything like that. <laughs> She's like, you best not. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's your show, Mike. You know, we can just do whatever. I mean, you call the shots, sir. We'll just pour vodka in a puddle of mud and drink out of that. Why not? Don't describe what you did last weekend on camera. No one needs to know about that. That was for you and the pigs alone. Okay, so I'm going to do three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. I'm just imagining that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> mud all over my beard. <laughs> oh, okay. She's like, no, what it's, it's grown worse. It's what too a time to be alive. Okay. So I'm going to take this sprig of mint. I'm just going to take some leaves off of this until I think it looks good. I think I usually do around like 8 to 10. Just depends. Like I said, till it looks good. I got the freshest mint I saw, too. This no, you can. Like, it's really aromatic. Like, you can just smell it. That's yeah. good mint. Slightly abused by me, but it's fine. All right. So we're going to take all those things. I like to muddle a little bit before I add my liquor. Don't ask me why I'm this way. Well, it's, but it's to, just uh, how I exist. It's to release the oils in the mint, right? Well, it, technically you can do that with the rum as well. But it's also going to be stirred. Mm, I see. For some reason, I just have this 
feeling that you can really um, like over mix your liquors. I've heard it somewhere. I have, and it's just like rubbed off on me. Mm, let's see. So again, we're gonna do an ounce and a quarter of our liquor, mostly because that's the size jigger we have. <laughs> If we had Mike's preference, it'd be two ounces easy. Easily. I'd just be turning the bowl of rum upside down and then eating a lime. And then playing in the mud with pigs. And playing in the mud with pigs. Absolutely. What What do other people do on a Thursday afternoon? Like, am, am I the only one? You did this before the week. I thought this was your weekend plans. We're just making it a weekday thing now, like it's casual. Okay. I mean, what, what do other people do when they get off work? How does everyone else relax? Did you see this ice? So our ice has kind of uh, become one. <laughs> so we're just going to be... Sorry, that was loud. I'm going to add some ice in here. It's great that people are going to walk away from this without absolutely any idea how to make a mojito. But they're all going to think, like, wow, Mike plays in the mud with pigs. <laughs> I mean, listen, you take you take away what you're given, and that's what you've given us, okay? I'm ready. I've, you want anything else? Oh, glass. My prettier glass. I made a grave error in judgment. Okay, y'all, so don't judge me. <laughs> just be like that sometimes you know what I mean it's just be like that we didn't have the proper uh, one of those wide uh, stirring glasses I thought we were supposed to use. I'm mixing yeah well I mean yeah. so I have a tin but I wanted to be able to see it um, and to be quite honest with you I just kind of lost my mind there because I was just imagining you with pigs and I mean it just is what it is we can't go back we can't change the past you did it we talked about it it's in my brain you know my nightmares my dreams Everything. Your dreams. Just saturated with Mike Pig's mud. Mike's mud pig blood. So anyways, we're just going to give this a nice little stir. Get it all really incorporated. Gives it a nice froth to it. And I like to garnish my mojitos with a fresh sprig of mint. It doesn't like to be garnished with it, apparently. But that's how we do it. And there you go. Looks beautiful. It's fantastic. Making of it was a little sloppy, but we got there, and that's really all that matters. We got there. We had a lot of fun doing it. It was mainly my fault. I kept on distracting her with big comments. I don't know how much true that is, but I'm going to take it, okay? <laughs> we'll just blame Mike. It's fine. I, I do that in day-to-day -day life anyway. Bad day, running late for work, it's Mike's fault. Mike, I stubbed my toe, you fucking dick. Absolutely. Uh, I feel like that should be a general rule. Like, what would Jesus do? Why is this Mike's fault? Here, why is it Mike's fault? <laughs> I got to give my nose on this, goddammit. <laughs> Alright, so obviously I'm getting a lot of mints up front because of the garnish. Gotta make them The break. lime is coming through. You're really not getting any of the um, herbal wheat notes from the Kolsch. It's all blended together really well. I love that it looks like a normal mojito as well. Mm -hmm. Like this is, I mean, a lot of the mojitos I've made, it looks just like this. And using club soda or a lot of us use Sprite for our mojitos, either way it's going to look kind of like this. It's very beautiful. Let's get the tasting. Oh, wow. I've been making mojitos wrong my entire life. I've made everything wrong my entire life. Why is my entire life a lot? Maybe I need to stop hanging out with pigs. It is true. <laughs> this might be the best mojito I've ever had. And I'm not saying that for... Looks at camera. Remember that. Remember he said that. Her her custom mojitos cost $30 a pop, by the way. Like, you gotta... You gotta it's really, it's the extra time that it takes... For me to change glassware so often, I feel I like to incorporate that into my price. <laughs> Sarah, I've been letting you taste it, taste them, but this one's mine. That's rude. 
because you've typed it up now so if it's anything less than just perfection I'm gonna just go get hit by this you get a little bit of the um, you get a little bit of the Kolsch coming on the very tail end of it from this uh, Fredonia I like the beer mixed in with it yeah and it's because the carbonation is it's still keeping it vibrant but and the thing is like with a good Kolsch it's supposed to give you that pop that like just that weirdly indescribable oomph. I know that, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's a it's a weird thing to articulate. It's the same principle as imagine someone who's never had coffee. How would you articulate coffee to them? If someone's never had a Kolsch, how would you articulate Kolsch to them? I articulate it, coffee as life, my lifeblood. Happiness. <laughs> yeah. But man, I appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you so much, Sarah. You're just like the most awesome person ever. I just came here for the ego boost. She came here for the praise. That's true. I had like an entire script of like mean things to say, but she just kept on impressing me, so I never got to say any of them. You got a woman with booze. All right, you guys. Spirits up.